All right, welcome to Department of Records um, and Information Services, also known as DORIS for short. Um, we're happy to have you here so we can learn about the different types of records that the agency has made available to the public and how you can all access them. Before we get started, let me introduce myself. My name is Ruthie Patel. I am the QA analyst for the IT department and I'm also the open data coordinator for the agency. We have Julia Robbins with us. She is the deputy librarian for the municipal library. And we also have Sylvia Kohler who is the director of municipal archives. Um, a little background about Doris. So the agency was established in 1977 with two main goals. The first is to preserve the historical and contemporary records and information by and about the New York City government. And the second goal is to make this information available to the public, both online and in person. Um, since we are Department of Records, I thought it was interesting to put the picture up on the right, which actually shows us from the local law when the agency was created. Um, there are three main municipal divisions within the Doris. The first one is the Municipal of Archives, which preserves and makes available the historical records of New York City government. The archive holds over 200,000 cubic feet and over 300 terabyte of records dating from the early 17th century to the present. Acquired from more than 100 city agencies, the collection comprises of what office records, manuscript materials, stills, and moving, object, moving images, ledger volumes, vital records, maps, blueprints, objects, and sound recordings, and digital files. That's a lot. <laughs> um, the Municipal Library is mandated by the New York City Charter as the official repository for the New York City Agency publications with access through the print collections and electronic government documentation portal, the lib library provides a unique set of resources on the history of New York City. And la oops, sorry. Mm. Okay. And lastly, we have the Municipal Records and Management Division, which has two primary functions. One is to develop and set citywide policies for records and information management while monitoring its compliance. And the second is to operate the storage facilities for the New York City agencies. Um, the first, let's start with the historical vital records. Um, so the Municipal Library, Municipal Archives, I'm sorry, has undertaken a mass digitization project to provide online access to 13.3 million historical birth, death, and marriage records. So currently we have about 10.1 million digitized records available to the public from the site. Um, the site allows you to browse through the records, as you can see, um, and we're about 76% done with this. Um, so when we say the birth certificates, they are digitized from 1855 to 1909. And here's a little chart that gives you a little bit of detail for the digitized certificates per borough. We also have a similar chart for the debt certificates. As you can see, there's a um, few in Manhattan that are still being, that are not yet digitized and will be done soon. Uh, for the marriage record, just a little note. So up to 1907, the New York City Health Department issued marriage certificates, but beginning 1908 due to New York's state law, couples planning to get married were starting to get marriage licenses from the city clerk. The city clerk marriage licenses typically includes an affidavit filled out by the couple, the license is issued by the clerk, and the certificate is completed by the person performing the ceremony. Since the health department continued to record the marriages until 1937, there's potentially two separate records of marriage from the period of 1908 and 1937. The recorded information is duplicative. However, the city clerk license includes additional information about the couple's parents and occupation. So we have divided up the marriage records into marriage certificates um, in the chart similar to before, where you can clearly see that the marriage certificates, we ended in 1937. And similarly, marriage licenses, they started in 1908. And there's quite a few that still need to be digitized. Um, so here's the actual uh, record, digitized record. Um, so when you go to the site, you're able to search the historical vital records for 
by the search of the last name or certificate number if you have it. Um, if you don't, you can browse through the year and the borrowers and find the record that you're looking for. Uh, once you find the certificate, you can either purchase a copy with a raised seal or a letter of exemplifications or no amendment correction letters. Or you can just simply just print or download the certificate at home. Um, because this is open data uh, week, um, we have to make sure that this, we show that our data for vital records is also available on open data. Um, here you can easily see the tabular view of all the birth certificates, the first name, last name um, we have. So we can filter through the system very easily. Uh, we have sound decks also on open data, uh, which you can filtered through in case there's any spelling differences in the names. Um, there's also differentiation between marriage certificate and licenses. And typically you can use the open data to do your own research as to how many births per year, per borough, for a specific year, if you are interested in such data. Um, next, we have the municipal archives collection guides. Um, as pre mentioned previously, the Municipal Archives mission is to preserve the New York City government's historical records and allow public access to the material. The Municipal Archives collection site allows you to explore over our collection dating from 1645 to the present. And the West collection includes documents, digital collections, still and moving images, ledgers, and docket books blueprints and audiovisual materials. Um, I have provided the URL, but again, at the end of the presentation, I'll provide all the URLs again for you. Um, within the site, um, you can also search by the collection, the subject names, the record group, um, whatever category. And if you're not sure, you can just simply use the search functionality in the website. Um, here are the few pages that you will see uh, on the top left. You'll see all the collections that we have. You can sort them by either the collection name or the date uh, or by date range. Um, you also have view the subjects, which are broken down into categories, view by names, which are grouped alphabetically, or review record groups, which can be sorted by name as well. And of course, there's this main search functionality with advanced options to filter through. Um, the Municipal Archives maintains over 3,800 acquis 3, acquisitions, and you can look up the details on the collection. Um, there are instructions on how you can access the collection. Depending on the collection, there will be also links to outside materials, such as digital materials, if present. Um, so on the screen, you can see that um, we have digital material. And if you scroll on the top, you can also see there's little instructions on how um, you can access it if, if it's on microfilm or anything, and what you can do and how you can get that information from us. Um, while you can get the digital material from the collections link, you can also go to the above link for the archives online gallery and access our online catalog. We have over 1.6 million images um, selected from world-class historical collections of the archives. Most of these are unique photographs, maps, documents, motion pictures, and audio recordings are being made accessible for the first time. Um, you can also see on the right, there's um, list of collections that we have grouped by um, just to make your search easier. Um, so we'll just go over a few collections um, so you can just see how vast our collection is. Um, so here is the collection we have from the online gallery, the 1940s and the 1980s tax photos. The collection consists of photos on every of every building in the five boroughs taken for the tax assessment purposes. In the 1980s, the collection was completed because the 1940s photographs were determined to be outdated for property tax appraisal purposes. And here you can see this is the building um, we have, um, 31 Chambers Street and the before 1940s and the 1980s. Um, I think it's very interesting. Um, then we will just search for, uh, if you weren't sure which collection you wanted to go to, you can also just search for by keywords. Um, here, I just type shorelines map, and here my results display the New York City shorelines um, and what we have in our collection. 
And the last collection I wanted to show you was the Elms House Ledger Collection. So this historic collection contains over 400 handwritten volumes pertaining to the city-run institutions, including Elms House, workhouses, lunatic asylum, penitentiary, penitentiar and vi various hospitals on Blackwell's Island, now known as Roosevelt Island. This ledger style admissions, discharges, and admissions, discharges, and deaths, and census books, and collection records, and names of people who are confined in various facilities. The volume contains detailed information regarding age, gender, disease, date of admission, discharge, and or death. The Elms Hall ledgers are preserved for future generations of researchers, scholars, genealogists, educators, and anyone interested in social, culture, and medical histories. And I just... I mean, if you can see how before the ledgers look and how we have digitized it, so I think it makes it very easy for people to access. And of course, we have um, our archives um, data sets on open data. We have four data sets published currently, and we're working with open data to publish a little bit more. Um, the data sets represents the standardized information gathered and attributed to the collections that improve access to multifaceted researches. Um, next, we go to the Municipal Library's uh, government publication portal. So the Municipal Library manages the government publication portal, also referred to as GPP for short. Um, the portal provides the public with permanent searchable online repository of New York City government's publication. Um, more recent changes to the New York City Charter, Section 1113, requires agencies to submit digital copies of all publications to the library for permanent access and storage. If agencies do not submit a report within 10 days of the publication, Doris is required to publish a notice that reports that has not been sent in place of until the report is published by the agency. Um, here is just a screenshot of what the portal looks like. Um, and in, next, we see like a few screenshots of what is inside the application. Um, inside the portal, you can see the list of publications that are available. Um, it allows you to search and sort the publications per your preference. And once you click on the specific publication, you can see the details of the publication. And also there's a link to download the publication for you. Um, as per the New York City Charter, um, section 1133 changes that require report Required reports list allows you to see the required reports the agencies need to submit. And so on here, you can sort by agencies and just go down the list. Um, and it gives you the specified law, local law and charter and code to where this report is required from. Um, there's also a search option, which allows you to search and get a list of each instance of the required report. And just a few GPP numbers. So it's a public facing starting April 2019. And up to now we have 200 agencies that are now submitting documents within the portal. And we have about 39, a little over 39,000 publications submitted. And these numbers are from beginning of March. So they're probably a lot more now. Um, we are also publishing two data sets from the GPP portal to onto the open data. Um, the first one is all required reports. This data set shows the metadata of for documents submitted to the Department of Records and Information Services, which are required by the legislation. And the second data set is all publications listings, which contains the metadata documents submitted to the government, to the Department of the Records, sorry, and Information Services in compliance with Section 1133 of the New York City Charter. Uh, and lastly, we have open records. Um, so the open records portal released in 2016 on uh, the portal is one of the applications which allows the public access to request records from the New York City agency by filling a freedom of information law FOIL request. So instead of individuals going to individual agencies, um, the public can easily access all the agencies via one portal. Um, we do have a few agencies not participating. That's right on the homepage, so just so you know. Uh, but if you are looking for a more recent records, such as a police record or something, this is where you should be going to 
request the FOIL. Um, inside the portal, you can see there's some screenshots of it. That you can request a rec record um, and just fill in the information. This is available to the public. Um, explore the FOIL requests that are already on the system. And there's also technical support if you have any issues creating tickets. Um, there is also a, a quick FAQ uh, questions, um, as well as you can generate a few quick reports. Um, here are just so open records numbers. Um, since 2016 launch, we have over 338,000 FOIL requests submitted. Um, here's a chart of, you can see the incrementation per year. Um, so we're stably growing. Uh, we have 62 active agencies currently participating on the portal. And as of beginning of March, we have, um, there are 289,500 FOILs requests closed. Um, if you wanted to just check which agency is most popular on the open records portal, um, New York City Police Department has 105,000 FOIL requests, followed by New York City Fire Department, which has about 76,000. Department of Transportation is 29,000 and Environmental Protection Agency is 27,000 and Department of Buildings is 23. So roughly, um, if you want to average out overall, so the average number of requests per agency is about 5,400. Um, the max the request agency has is 5,004 requests, which is Department of Police Department. And then um, there's a minimum request that agency has, which is um, six. And if you're curious, that's um, New York City Districting Commission. Um, we also provide this information from open records to the open data portal. Um, you can go ahead and explore you know, which agency is closing out which request and how much time, if you're interested in this data, how fast they're doing this. Um, you can do other research with it as well. Um, the Municipal Library and Municipal Archives um, do provide public reading rooms, which are open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. and 1 a.m. 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. for by appointment only. So you can contact us at researcherrecords.nyc.gov to make an appointment and to you can hopefully can come and visit us. Um, if you have other inquiries, um, we encourage you to go to the Web, the main website and there's a contact us page because um, depending on the type of specific requests you have, they go to different, different emails. So encourage you to do that. Um, um, that sums up the New York City records um, for Doris and that are made available to the public. Uh, are there any questions or comments? I'm going to go off this presentation now. Um, is there anything on chat? Let me just see. Uh, give me one second. I mean, if anybody wants to just ask them on the microphone, that'd be easier to, or just raise their uh, hand. Riddhi, there was a um, question about whether vital records are freely available, the birth, marriage, and death certificates, or whether they require a fee. And the answer, which you already gave, was that some certain things require a fee, but most of them are freely available. Right, so if you wanted to just print it or download it, it's free, it's available to you, but if you wanted uh, a seal on it or any type of amendment letters or anything, then it's, there's a charge for it. Right. Does that include- And there was also, sorry, go ahead. Does that include up to the present day or is that historical on the just vital historical, records? historical. And current records are not available? They're not available through us. They're available through the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene or through the city clerk's office. Do you have to have a, a connection to the person that uh, is involved or can that be? Uh, for certain records you do. Um, DOHMH's website makes it pretty clear. Okay, thank you. Sure. All right. Uh... So there's a question, uh, Rudy, who is the person whom news media should contact for photos to publish, like archival photos? Um, um, and I think the answer is, yeah, go ahead. I, I'm not actually sure if you know. I was gonna well, say- Well, there's an order process online. There's an order process online and for permissions, the best thing is to email research at records um, and they'll send you a form that you have to fill out um, right. for permission. 
Thank you, Julie. Uh, I was going to put the links on the chat window as well in case people wanted all the links that we have on the presentation. I think I put I put them. Oh, you did? OK, great. Thank you. Yeah. Luna, Almshaus, Ledger, Historical Vital Records, um, the GPP, I think I put the GPP in. Yeah. Yeah, so there should be about uh, historical vital records, municipal archives, online gallery, government publication, online open records portal, and just the contact us link. And there's a question from Kathleen about if she were to look up when uh, her building was built at around 1871, where would she go? So the answer is somewhat complicated, but um, we do have, it depends on where the building is for one thing but for buildings in Manhattan below a certain um, latitude, we have uh, property cards uh, from, and uh, block and lot folders from the Department of Buildings. And we also have a list of new building applications. Um, so best uh, idea is to email research at, and then you'll be directed to the most fruitful place to find those materials. I have a question about the government publications portal. I've been there before. Um, I'm just wondering, is there a way, it feels a little random to me, the organization, right. like in terms of what's presented and, you know, like, is there a way of navigating that that is um, either topical or I don't know, even uh, chronological? Well, uh, you can always um, filter the request results by agency and date, and um, you can search by keywords. Oh, I see, and I see. under the agency. Sort. agency. Yeah, yeah. And, you can, and you can uh, sort it either by relevance or by date. So you can either do it from oldest to newest or newest to oldest. So there are uh, quite a few different ways you can slice and dice uh, your searches, but it's, um, you know, it's fairly shaggy. There are a lot of things in there. So if you ever need any help with it, by all means, reach out to us either at research ad or, um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Happy to help, sure. Okay. There, there are a couple other questions in the chat. Uh, will, uh, where will the presentation slides be available? Um, I can provide them to you, Z, we'll, can open data. Yeah, I, yeah, and I can I can send it out uh, to to folks who registered for this event. Also, this event is currently being recorded, so I can uh, we'll we'll post this on YouTube uh, shortly. Okay. Um, Kathleen, if, to follow up, yeah, email us at research ad, and we'll be able to help you track that down. Okay. Well, is there any uh, collection that anybody find interesting? Um, I know I personally like the photo collection of the 1940s and the 80s because I like to compare. And even if you looked at the 31 chambers pictures, you can see one of the buildings is gone within the 40 year time frame. So, Do you have any kind of newsletter or anything that you um, send out when you add new things to the um, collections? Um, Sylvia, do you know if we add? Do this. We don't have a newsletter. We, that we have a newsletter. No. Go ahead, sir. Go for it, Julie. You 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 do it. <laughs> I'm trying to find um, the link so I can send them a link. So we don't have a newsletter that we send out to an email group beyond the um Municipal Libraries newsletter. You can sign up to get um, the Municipal Library newsletter, which does include, um, you know, news from across the agency, actually. Um, so it doesn't necessarily always reflect new collections that we've published. Um, we do um, kind of promote things through things like social media. Um, but a formal newsletter, no. There's there's also the historical blog. Sylvia, will you tell them about that? I'll try to put a link in the chat. 
Sure. Um, we have a site that features some of our collections and exhibitions and digital galleries as well. It's archives.nyc. And on that site, there are um, a bit, it's a bit more curated um, content about our collections. And it does also include a blog that we um, publish every week, every Friday. Um, and, and that is done by staff throughout the agency as well. You can connect with Julie on the Municipal Library newsletter. Julie, I don't know if you know how to, yep. I'm trying to find the link, sorry. Uh, website is there. Um, no, Julie, uh, Julie Kathleen asked if how we can subscribe to the newsletter. I know I'm working on finding that out. <laughs> I'll put a I'll put a link in the chat as soon as I find it. I'm <laughs> um, I'm having a hard time. Um, if you're not speaking, can would people mind muting? There's oh, it's probably me. There's background noise. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, I see. Okay, sorry, Julie. <laughs> no, it's. Okay, here's the link for the municipal library news. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions? Uh, is the office open for visitors? If you make an appointment. Um, we actually, I mean, we also have, um, I mean, you can walk in, but it is best to make an appointment because we can prepare things for you. Um, we do have things. Um, in offsite locations. So if you're doing research, it's better to talk to an archivist or a librarian about what you'd like to research so that we can prepare as many things for you as possible. Um, it's just easier. <laughs> yeah. Um, the so, so there are two reading and reference rooms um, at our main location at 31 Chambers Street. Um, the one really caters to genealogical research and um, walk-ins into that room are much easier to facilitate because all of our collections that are not digitized and on the Historical Vital Records app are on microfilm in that room. So that is much easier to walk into and ask for vitals. Um, and we definitely encourage that. Um, and then the library and archives, that's where, you know, connecting with research at records really does help to make sure that we have the collections you're actually looking for. Um, a lot of times people think we just have everything related to New York City and it's, it's, it's not. <laughs> um, it's, you know, content created by city agencies. And in answer to the question in the chat about whether we have digitized archival newspapers, the answer is no, we do not. Except for the city record, which we do have, that's the New York City's official um, newspaper and publication point, but um, Otherwise, we do not. NYPL has an amazing collection that you can access and the, all the public library, BPL in Queens as well. Thank you everyone for joining the session.